almost all of the electronics in your home, from the refrigerator to your computer, are powered by an outlet. Have you ever wondered where electricity comes from? Everything originates in power plants. They have huge generators which most often run on the thermal energy of steam. They convert heat into electricity, and at home we can boil an electric kettle in a couple of minutes. But why should we pay to run a power plant? After all, you can build your own small station and provide yourself with electricity for years to come. But it turns out that everything is not so simple. People have been trying to build small home power plants for a long time. As a rule, this doesn't end well. Some have even died during the construction process. But that's definitely not for us. Today, we'll try to make our own nuclear reactor and use it to arrange a nuclear party on a desert island. At the end of 2020, an event thundered in the world of science. A 12-year-old teenager named Jackson Oswald assembled a nuclear reactor at his home. The boy managed to build a Farnsworth fuser relatively inexpensively, a device that allows you to control thermonuclear reactions. The fuser cost Jackson $10,000 and took two years to construct. Most of the parts the teenager ordered off eBay. Do you think that the young physicist was able to provide his home with electricity for many years? In fact, much more energy was spent in the manufacturing process of the reactor than it can give. It's important to understand that nuclear fusion and nuclear decay are different things. The fuser, which Jackson built, can synthesize heavy atomic nuclei from lighter ones. In nuclear decay, the opposite is true. Humans are good at getting electricity from decay, but it's still difficult to get any real benefit from synthesis. Scientists believe that in the future, thermonuclear fusion may become an almost inexhaustible source of energy. Today, there's no thermonuclear reactor that could run anyone's home. If a reactor cannot produce more energy than it needs to operate, then it doesn't meet the Lawson criterion. Not a single single fuser has yet come close to this value, and it's unprofitable for the government to finance projects that don't bring visible benefits. It's funny that before 12-year-old Jackson Oswald, 14-year-old Taylor Wilson made a similar fuser. So we can expect that in the near future, someone at the age of 10 will create another thermonuclear reactor. If Jackson and Taylor's goal was to contribute to the development of thermonuclear physics, David Hahn, nicknamed the Radioactive Boy Scout, had a different goal, to provide his home with energy. He assembled a nuclear reactor in his barn. To do this, he needed rare elements that couldn't be found on the free market, namely americium-241, radium-226, and uranium-238. Americium is found in small quantities in smoke detectors. A good manufacturer sold Han hundreds of non-working sensors for $1 each. To get radium, he had to look in the dump for an old watch with luminous hands. The treasured element can be found in a small amount of luminescent paint. With uranium, things are a little more complicated. You just can't get it. But this didn't stop Han from introducing himself as a professor of physics and fraudulently buying it from a Czechoslovak company. In the end, the reactor never started working. The 17-year-old scientist failed to obtain energy from nuclear fission. When he noticed that within a few blocks from his laboratory, the radiation pollution had grown to an unacceptable level, it was decided to curtail the project. David wanted to take all the materials into the forest, but on his way, he was arrested by the police. In the shed, which served as a laboratory, they found objects with radiation levels a thousand times higher than the permissible level. 22 years later, Han died, not from acute radiation sickness, but from alcohol poisoning. There's only one conclusion. You shouldn't build a reactor yourself if you aren't an engineer at a nuclear power plant. You run the risk of causing great harm to the world around you, and also ending up behind bars. On the other hand, 
There are times in life when desperate steps are needed. Imagine you're crossing the Pacific Ocean in a small ship carrying old broken computers and tritium capsules. This metal is used to generate weak electricity and to illuminate the elements of some devices. Suddenly, a terrible storm begins. The team loses control of the ship and it crashes into a rock, after which it begins to sink. You realize that death is inevitable. In the confusion, you find containers with the things necessary for the reactor, climb under the floating remains of the ship, and wait for your raft to be washed ashore. After a while, you spot the shore and swim up to it. After exploring the surroundings, you realize that you've been brought to a desert island. The only question that bothers you is, how can I get out of here? Suddenly, an idea comes to you. To assemble a nuclear reactor from improvised means in order to provide yourself with electricity and then use this energy to power a powerful laser that can send a distress signal up into the night sky. You'll have a chance at being noticed by a passing helicopter and survive after such serious trouble. We won't be able to assemble a full-fledged uranium reactor like at nuclear power plants, but we can use tritium capsules to build a beta decay system. This capsule can be ordered online for $10. You're just lucky. Let's get started. Try not to break the capsule, much less burn its contents. In both cases, your body will receive strong radiation. The energy from the decay of tritium needs to be collected on a solar panel. You can find this in a calculator among other computer junk. To prevent the particles from scattering chaotically, they need to be focused. To do this, wrap the tritium capsule with foil. Now take off your glasses if you have a pair. Remove the lenses from them and install them in such a way that the beam of beta particles hits exactly on the solar panel. It's better to construct everything within a small box made of thick cardboard so the device doesn't fall apart. Now, we connect the wires from the solar panel to the computer board, which has an LED. We give it a minute for the battery to charge and observe the LED lighting up. Congratulations, the reactor is operating. Albeit at a very low power. But this isn't enough to send a light signal to rescuers. It's necessary to assemble a more powerful laser from scrap materials. Our tritium reactor has a capacity of only 7 milliwatts. If you assembled a dozen of these reactors, you could recharge your smartphone in 20 years. Laser with a power of 300 milliwatts we need to assemble 43 mini nuclear reactors. Now, let's get to the laser itself. Digging through the computer parts, you find an old Chinese illuminated pointer, a broken floppy drive, and many printed circuit boards. If you take out the red laser diode from the drive and install it in the Chinese pointer module with a lens, having the right board and applying the correct current, you can get a really powerful laser. All that's left is to connect it to our nuclear reactors. After a few days of hard work, you succeed. You wait until night falls for the laser to be as visible as possible. You release the reactor power to its maximum, and in one second, a bright red ray begins hitting the heavens. Just don't put your hand in the light. The laser is powerful enough to light a match or leave a hole in lightweight fabric. If you see monkeys on the island, don't shine it in their eyes so that they don't go blind. And now there is salvation. A few hours later, a rescue helicopter flying past that noticed a strange red glow from your island has landed to check. You're incredibly happy to see living people and suggest that they not fly away immediately. Instead, you can use the power of the assembled reactor to throw an island party with light music and powerful bass. From LEDs, which are abundant in computers, you make bright and multicolored strobe lights. From a huge speaker and a piece of wood, a powerful, low-frequency, almost infrasonic subwoofer. All of this is connected to a tritium reactor. 
and can work for a while while you dance with the rescuers, celebrating your victory over death. And suddenly, in the middle of dancing, a cold sweat hits you. You've completely forgotten about cooling the reactor, but it's operating at full capacity. What will happen? Will a large 300 milliwatt tritium reactor made up of 43 small ones explode and destroy the entire island? Or is there still a chance at survival? Write your answer to this question in the comments. Remember that building a reactor at home is dangerous business, especially if you're not good at physics. Take care of your life. Stay away from radioactive metals. And as always, thanks for watching.